Happy New Year, it's January 3rd, 2024. We're bringing you an update from Hurricane Ian. And uh, we're gonna go out on the island today. We're gonna do it a little bit differently than how we did it before. We're gonna show you what's open. Um, and if it's not, we're just gonna cover the new businesses that are open, new resorts, uh, new facilities, anything that's relevant that's open, uh, we're gonna be covering. So as you can see, we're heading out over the uh, causeway right now. They've made big progress on the causeway. There's been a lot of shutdowns on the causeway. They've been digging up um, the part that joins the causeway to the ground where the actual bridge is. So that's caused some major delays over the last few months. They've major, only, major. Big, only been... big headaches. I think people have been, some people have reported two and a half hours just to get on the island, but thank goodness they made a huge push right before Christmas came and they were able to open it back up to two lanes. So hooray for that. Hooray for the causeway workers. we're going to be heading back down towards the lighthouse and give us an update on the lighthouse Laurie what's been going on over, over there well I just read in the paper that I think this week or next week they are going to be replacing the missing leg of the lighthouse so that's huge news for everybody obviously uh, the lighthouse is still standing after the storm the keepers cottages did wash away but our lighthouse built in 1884 is still standing with three legs instead of four there's a temporary wooden leg on there right now um, but they're supposed to they fabricated a new leg and they are supposed to be putting it on this week or next week and then they're going to be doing a repainting of the outside and the inside let's just talk quickly about the island uh, this is um, this is coming up to island a and uh, you can see that they're raising the ground level quite substantially. All the reinforcements on the left side of the bridge or the south side of the bridge have gone in. There's uh, breakwaters there that have gone in, been drip pile driven into the ground. You can see they've added at least another three or four feet of ground on the right hand side here on the north side. And they're still in the process of doing a lot more. Uh, construction hasn't stopped since the storm, so we're what nearly uh, 14, 15 months after the storm, and it's still going strong. A lot of rip rap there. Um, so we did see reports that I think final final completion might be 2027. So quite a long way, still way to go, but it's not hindering anybody getting on and off the island now. It's just made uh, the outskirts of the actual road that they're working on and the erosion prevention and still no change in the demographic of the traffic lots and lots of construction vehicles as you can see uh, mixed in with a sprinkling of um, of tourists but mainly still construction traffic uh, today it's 1:39 right now we're purposely coming in this time of day i've got a family portrait to do this afternoon so i'm going to be going to do that traffic has been fairly heavy coming off the islands late afternoon um, and we didn't say who's in the car i've got myself nick we've got laurie and we've got max sitting in the back so she's well, our, our son so, yeah he's been on all the other updates with us in, in case you haven't watched any of the updates a little bit about background of us um we had a business on the island for 23 years called Nick Adams Photography, where we did family portraits, weddings, real estate, um, commercial. commercial work, you name it. We did lose our studio in the storm. We had about five feet of water in there and lost everything inside. Luckily, we had taken all our camera gear and our computers and things like that, but everything else was washed away. So here we are on the second island here and you can see similar situation the island uh, the land has been built up and uh, lots of rock to bolster it another thing they've just started i believe last week is a beach renourishment project where they're bringing i think 400,000 tons of sand i don't quote me on the numbers but 
I think 370 trucks a day um, are bringing sand to the beaches and then they're staging it at different uh, spots along the length of the island and um, then they're spreading it out from there to fill in the gullies and uh, everything that was washed away from uh, Hurricane Ian. The project is scheduled to be completed at the end of April, I believe, of 2024. They, they need to finish it before the start of sea turtle nesting season, which I believe starts on May 1st. And here we go, we're going on to the final span before you get onto the island. And you can see Adventures in Paradise boat going out on the right there. One of the few businesses been operating throughout, even right after the storm was working in an emergency capacity right after the storm. They've never stopped. Um, uh, they did have a temporary um, place at Bell Tower Shops in Fort Myers, but they have since moved back to the island recently. So they actually have a physical location in Tahitian Gardens where they have really awesome clothing and shoes and a really nice boutique and then also they run uh, charter like uh, dolphin tours sunset tours shelling tours so definitely check them out so the boat ramp is open it's just open temporarily for non-residents it's only open monday through friday for non-residents Residents can use it seven days a week. And then also right beside the road ramp, there is a tiny beach, it's called Causeway Beach. A lot of people don't know about it. Um, it's a cute little beach. There's some picnic tables, a grill. There's a nice parking lot and uh, bathrooms and showers there. Uh, parking would be $5 an hour to park there. So you get a really nice view of the causeway. There's some really pretty gumbo limbo trees, so. And then we also, the first one of business is actually Sandcap Gateway Realty um, is the first actual business that's open and then the chamber. There's wonderful volunteers in there that will, you stop in and they will answer any questions that you have and um, they have pamphlets and things to pick up. So definitely stop in. Also stop in and see the amazing shell that's our, heart that's built all out of seashells it's really cool all right so we're pulling up to the uh, lighthouse and the lighthouse is now fully open the parking lot is open you can see there's plenty of tourists here as laurie was saying before the lighthouse is fully under in the process of going under repair you can see how many cars are here this Wait. is this is typical for a season even the parking enforcement agent is out look at that good signs so a little bit about the beach parking. Uh, we have mentioned it in the past, but it is $5 an hour to park. And instead of actual physical machines, they got destroyed from Hurricane Ian. You actually have to um, text a number on your phone and then they it, it sends you back a link and you go to the link and you actually have to enter your credit card information and your license plate number and things of that nature. $5 an hour to park. Uh, Definitely make sure you pay to park. We've heard lots and lots of stories of people getting a $150 fine. So not fun for a beach day on Sanibel to get that fine. So they are replenishing the sand on the beach. There's many, many trucks gonna be coming in to replenish the sand. That's an ongoing process. As you can uh, see, there's a bike rack. So if you wanna ride your bike down here, um, the restroom facilities are still not open yet. So they do have the infamous porta, -porta potties and you can see that a lot of the undergrowth is missing so it gives you a great view of the beach uh, before obviously you couldn't see that but it's now open to see the beach but uh, yeah plenty of people here which is great to see it is obviously a holiday week uh, which is one of the busiest holidays of the year or busiest weeks of the year should i say we you might find that laurie and i do interrupt each other occasionally please don't be offended by it 
We have been married for 25 no, we years. Have. Yes, we have. No, we have. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've, we're trying to get a lot in, so we might have to occasionally interrupt each other. I know we had in the comments somebody saying that we did interrupt, but that's perfectly okay. We have got to try and get quite a lot in. So leaving the lighthouse, um, we're going to be talking about the places that are open. We're going to go down and look at the, Shall we go down and look at the lighthouse? Let's go down and look at the lighthouse here. So we just left the one of the main lighthouse beach parking lot, and then if you come out and turn right, you're actually going to be on a road that will take you to the actual physical lighthouse itself. And there's two more smaller parking lots on this road. So if the main one is full, make sure you check over here. This one to the left is um, I know kind of like a, a secret one because people don't. A lot of people don't park there. You can see you can't actually use the original road going down to the lighthouse, but you can still use the fishing pier parking lot. And as you can see, everybody's uh, packed in over there and there's not many cars here. So be sure to check this one out. Now, I'm not sure if you can walk all the way around. I don't think you actually can. So maybe that's why it's not quite what, so busy. because of erosion? Uh, because it's uh, the actual lighthouse part is fenced off. So I don't know if you can walk in the water around oh, gotcha. to get to the other side. I'm not sure if you can or not. Yeah. The uh, fishing pier is still not open, so, um, but there is a cool osprey nest that they just put up, so go check out the osprey. And some, there is a beach on this side, so sometimes when the wind is in the, uh, is coming off the water, if the wind's coming from the west, then sometimes this is the best, best side to be. It's a little bit sheltered from the wind. So once again, it's $5 an uh, hour to park, and I did forget to mention that the parking lots do have Wi-Fi, so a lot of people are asking, what would you do if you come from overseas and don't have a, a cell phone plan? Um, they do have Wi-Fi in the parking lot, so just go up to the kiosk. There's um, information boards. Go check those out, and it should all be on there. Okay, so we're coming up to the stop sign here, back on to the very start of Periwinkle Way. Taking a right back onto the main road going all the way to Captiva. It's amazing to see how much is open. I actually made a list. I typed it all out and I was so happy to actually, once you have it actually in, um, in writing, it's pretty cool to see how much has reopened since the storm. Okay, so the very first thing that's open is the Seahorse Cottages, which are down Buttonwood Lane. There's only four little cottages, but they're super sweet, and I believe they come with bikes, and it's not very far to get down to the lighthouse from here. They do daily and weekly accommodations. Look at that, cute little place. It's got a little tiki hut. Can't beat that. All renovated, so uh, check oh. them out. They have a website, Laurie? Yep, seahorsecottages.com. Right, here we are coming back out to Periwinkle Way. Turning right onto Periwinkle Way. And here we have on the right, Emotions Resort Wear. And then where the Lighthouse Restaurant used to be, there's going to be a new restaurant called Wiki's Lighthouse Restaurant. It is a collab between the Mad Hatter and the Island Cow. So we're really looking forward to checking that out. Lighthouse Restaurant Cafe is now up by uh, the corner of... Uh, right by the Lazy by the Lazy Flamingo, right at the Causeway and Periwinkle Way. And then also in the same plaza, you have Tuttle's Seahorse Shell Shop. They have really cool souvenirs. They've actually been in operation since 1973. And then next to that will be a new ice cream place called... 
the magic bus, ice cream and caffeine. So another thing to look forward to. That's also the collaboration between Mad Hatter and the Island Cow. And then if you pull down uh, the side of the seahorse shops, you will come to the Parrot Nest Cottages, which is another cute little spot that's open. Do you remember how many cottages are here, Nick? I think it's eight. Eight or nine. It's, uh, it could be six or seven. <laughs> Maybe 10 or 11. Right. That's There's honest. a few, but it's a cute little place and it's in a great location. Just small, quaint. I see three buildings in one of the duplexes. Yeah. But uh, this is great Anne, atmosphere. This is Anne Hingo Lane. Then going back out to Periwinkle Way. If you look right straight across from Periwinkle Way, another uh, resort that's open is called the Tarpon Tail Inn. I believe they have eight places and it's right there on the corner of East Gulf Drive and Periwinkle Way. Totally refurbed. I went in and had a look at the rooms. They look amazing, beautiful. Uh, so many great comments about people that stay there. So I highly recommend. On the left, you got the Sanibel Sea School. Not open yet. Not open yet. <laughs> Although the buses did just drive past. So. Yeah, I think they are still operating. They're just not in that physical building, but they are still offering classes. So on the right up here, we got the marina. And uh, that is open, as I understand. Is the restaurant open? Yes. Grandma Dots. Grandma Dots is open i believe it just opened last week or the week before everybody's been waiting for that so it says open right there yeah there so it's right down there on north yachtsman drive that's the sandball marina and grandma dots now we're coming up to the bridge the humpback bridge that was completely destroyed in the storm if you remember uh during our first tour you could you couldn't actually come down this road at all it was impassable this bridge was taken out and uh even though i think max came across it when he shouldn't did you max on a bike yeah yes may or may not have done. <laughs> i was not the only one crossing the bridge everyone i mean i was here two days after the storm there was travel options were limited so yeah we we, we made way yeah i'm glad you told me afterwards because i would have been really nervous about you doing that all right, here we are at the four-way stop. We have the, our crossing guards are back again, directing traffic. Great to see them, keeping the traffic flowing. So just ahead of us on the right-hand side is gonna be where the Lighthouse Cafe is going to be. And then Lazy Flamingo, we believe it's going to be coming back. We hope it's gonna be coming back. The Dairy Queen has been sold and we believe that's gonna be coming back We've heard it's going to be an affordable place to get lunch. And Similar grab, type grab price a, point, yeah. but not Dairy Queen. Not get Dairy Queen itself. Burgers and ice creams, basically. Yeah. On the left here is Royal Shell Vacations and Royal Shell Real Estate. All right, here on the right is gonna be where the new Lighthouse Cafe was. That used to be Santa Bell Fresh. And then we have the Lazy still under construction and where the uh, Dairy Queen used to stand, it's being refurbed at the moment. The bait box has been lifted, raised up a few feet and it's gonna reopen. And on the left, we have Periwinkle Park and Campground. Our great friends in there, the Menches, they are open for business, for camping, RVs. Give them a call. Also on the left here is Sea Oats Day Spa. They do manicures, pedicures, give some pampering. Then we have She Sells Seashells, an island staple. Huxter's is open. 
just the left hand side is open, uh, which used to be the liquor store, but they're operating out of there and they're refurbing the, the rest of it. And here's the shack, which is a new uh, custard place. And on the right, we have Tootie Posse and Roser um, Insurance. And actually my sister has an office in there called Kennedy Construction. And here we have Cello, which is a fine dining restaurant. Wonderful food, amazing cocktails. And okay, next here on the right is the SCCF Native Landscapes and Garden Center. Really interesting, you can go back in there. They sell native plants that um, will survive during the hurricanes. They don't need a lot of, uh, they don't need fertilizer. So they're super informative back there. Even if you don't live here, it's kind of neat to go have a look and see what kind of vegetation or plants they sell. Okay, and on the left we've got mud bugs definitely open it's been open for quite soon after the storm billy's bike rentals on the right is open again mud bugs is a cajun style restaurant whitney's has been open for a long time and yeah. has been lifted. And right across from Whitney's we have Royal Shell Vacations. Royal Shell Vacations and Traders has been open a long time Traders, too. Traders, awesome restaurant and they also have a, an amazing gift shop if you just want to shop you can stop in there and On pick the up left, some souvenirs. On the left we've got uh, Rachel Pierce's art gallery that's been open a long time. A wonderful artist, she's amazing, you gotta check out her work and right beside that is an island um, outdoor market that they set up. And our old studio which is behind Island Pizza which is also Sweet Melissa's at night as well and Sandoval Art and Frame, and uh, just heard that Macintosh Books will be moving into the heart of the island shop, so hooray for that. Pfeiffer's are in business, but Pfeiffer. they're not quite in this. Pfeiffer Realty, they're in the back building, but not mm. the front one. And Sandoval Holiday is in there. Um, Jerry's have been open from right after the storm, and most of the shops inside are open. Which is Nanny's, um, what Mango else? Bay on the left is open. H2O Outfitters, Footloose, and the Sanibel Spirits. And Sanibel Community Church is open. Okay, next up we'll be coming to Tahitian Gardens. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We have uh, Sanibel Soul is open, Shiny Objects, Sanibel Cafe, our good friend Richard, he's in there. He just reopened and that's where uh, oh, Adventures in Paradise is located. This is where we're just coming up to on the left. And then also Wilford and Lee, which is a really cool uh, shop selling knickknacks and um, things of that nature. Just go in and check them out. And we also have Forever Green Ace Hardware, which is, I'm sure they're doing a ruin business <laughs> for all the refurbing that is happening. Periwinkle Place. We have the Blue Giraffe, which is, they have a food truck. They had a, a physical presence in there before they had a food truck out front. Sanibel Day Spa, which is on the second floor, just opened. I believe Congress Jewelers is coming back. Pinocchio's, Chico's. We just talked to Dina from Chico's and she said they will be coming back soon. So that she started getting deliveries of the, the clothing. Okay, the Community House, Sanibel Community Association is back open. They have classes like shell classes and painting classes, open to anybody, visitors, residents alike. Uh, the little playground there, if you have little ones, you can bring your kids.
St. Michael's is open, the church. And then on the left here, we have Winds, which is open. Which is a beachwear shop and also Finnamore's cycle shop and bike rental. And here we have Breakaway Vacations is open, the Santa Bonca Captiva Community Bank, Cottages to Castles, the Island Locksmith, and Fish of Sanibel uh, just opened, so and the Grog Shop. The only building left on part of Bailey's is open. And so is Doc Ford's, which is over ahead to the left a little bit. Well, we're going to take a right and we're going to head out towards Capa de Var. No, we're not. We're going to go back down the Palm Ridge Road. <laughs> which will eventually take us back <laughs> on to the Sandcap Road, which will take us to Captiva. Right. But we're going on Tarpon Bay Road. And then we have the Timbers, which is open. And the Sanibel Grill. Sanibel Grill. And also um, Island Management. Good to see all the bikers back out. Yeah. Hurdy Gurdy Art Gallery is open. That's an art co op, and right beside Hurdy Gurdy is another art co op called the Tower Gallery Art. And then there's also a French bistro called Blue Rendezvous. This gas station is one of the only ones that's been open. It's still the only one that's open, the Rebel. Our favorite place to come get a drink. Yes. And don't forget straight ahead was Tarpon Bay Explorers. You can rent kayaks and they have tours that leave out of Tarpon Bay Explorers and they are the concession for Ding Darling. Oh, uh, the, the walk-in center is there, the health uh, center. Then we have Chase Bank on the right, the Great White Grill, pizza, wings, sports bar, and our good friends at the Sandcap Pack and Ship, they do packaging and they have also they also have cute little souvenirs now. Costa Vista Designs and uh, landscaping. Not sure if Costa Vista is back open I there. think it is. Is it? Kingfisher, Vacation Rentals Real Estate is open. And we have the fire station. We just turned down Worcester Lane. Worcester eventually turns into Dunlop. And on the left, we have the Sanibel Historical Museum and Village and Big Arts. Uh, they have tons of classes. They just announced their season for this year. They, have, they bring in musical acts and plays and things of that nature. So go on their website and see what they have to offer. And then we have City Hall, and every Sunday, this is where the Sanibel Island Farmers Market sets up. It's a, a amazing place to come. So many people are wandering around, picking up treats. Highly recommend. And last up on this road, Dunlop Road, is the Sanibel Library. Again, they have um, a new season of things that are happening, author talks and such, so make sure you go to their website and check them out. Well, I'm going to turn around back here, and then this is the Public Works Department, which is not open to the public, funnily enough. Funnily enough. Okay, heading back down towards Palm Ridge Road on our left, we have Cook's Plaza. And in there, we have, what is up in there, Laurie? Sanibel Deli and Coffee Factory. And now we're taking a right onto Palm Ridge Road. And now this will take us back out onto the Sandcap Road. We're tracing back our tracks, back past where King we just Fisher. came from. Kingfisher, Costa Vista Designs.
I also forget to mention that Keller Williams is open in the same plaza as the Great White Grill. Once again, we're back at Tarpon Bay Explorers. They do tours and rentals. Okay, we're coming down the Sandcap Road, heading our way to Captiva. The next thing open is Rosalita's. We just passed the Bailey Matthews National Shell Museum. Temporarily closed, but uh, keep checking on their website. They are definitely going to be reopening. We will pick back up at Rosalita's. Okay, so on the left here we have Rosalita's and we're going to turn on to Rabbit Road. Rosalita's Ro is a new restaurant open after the hurricane. I actually went there for lunch the other day. Highly recommend. Okay, so we're coming to the end of Rabbit Road, which will take us into West Gulf Drive. And we're we'll probably go, we're gonna go down here on West Gulf Drive and we'll pick up again when we get to Tarpon Bay, where Tarpon Bay Beach is. On the right ahead of us, you have the Island Inn. You can see it's got two buildings there that are open. The original part is not there, but the, the two buildings that you can see on your right hand side are open and it's had rave reviews. So check out the Island Inn. And then we're gonna keep going down West Gulf Drive and we will pick up when we get to Tarpon Bay Road where Tarpon Bay Beach is. Coming up to Tarpon Bay Road, corner of Tarpon Bay Road and West Gulf, West Gulf Drive. If you turn to, uh, to your right is the entrance to Tarpon Bay Beach. If you go to the left, that's where you actually uh, park to get to the beach. And if you continue down there, it'll take you to Dock Fords, Max and Hannah's favorite restaurant, Shout out to Yucatan Shrimp. And we'd like to welcome Hannah, who is a guest camera person. Thanks for joining us, Hannah. Hannah from Ohio. Hannah from Ohio, world famous Hannah from Ohio. Or as Grandpa Roger says, Hannah, Hannah, Hannah the vamp from Savannah. We're so. not sure why, but. <laughs> Apparently it was a, an old tune. <laughs> yeah, we're very happy to have Hannah here this week. She's visiting. How do you like Sanibel so far? Beautiful. You've been having fun? Yeah, it's beautiful. This is my second time here. Happy to be back. And tell us what you love about Yucatan, or Doc Fords. Oh, the Yucatan shrimp. Oh yeah, that's the best. Unbeatable. Yeah, and Max even, as Christmas presents, gave Hannah uh, and her mom some Yucatan shrimp Bottle of Yucatan shrimp. About, yes. That I will smother on everything. <laughs> <laughs> close to the original, so if you need a you can shrimp fix, go on the website, you can order it to be shipped straight to your door. On the right hand side here we have Gulfside City Beach Park, Algiers Lane. And Another public um, parking spot for you to get to the beach. And the children's center of the islands is open. Now if you were to continue straight down here you would end up coming out by Jerry's. We're going to take a right which is going to take us on to Middle Gulf Drive and work our right way around past Sundial Inn. What's the correct word for Sundial Laurie? The Sun correct... Sundial 
Resort and Spa. Sundial Resort and Spa, yes. Sundial Beach Resort and Spa. I know I was missing a word. Sundial Beach Resort and Spa. So now we've just turned on to Middle Gulf um, and we will pick up when we get to Sundial Beach Resort and Spa. On the right hand side, we are coming up to where, Laurie? Sanibel Beach Resort and Spa. On Sanibel the left. Beach Resort and Spa. Right. Sundial. Sundial Beach Resort and Spa. And on the left is their pickleball courts. They are back open. Uh, public are welcome at certain times. So go on their website and if you need a pickleball fix, get your pickleball on. Okay, here we are at the stop at Folger Street. Straight ahead is the Sanibel Siesta on the beach, and they are actually taking reservations for March through December of 2024. Good news there. And right around this curve to the left, if you turn to the left, you will find the Sanibel Island Golf Club. And it's open. Have you played there yet, Nick? Not yet. Green's looking great. Fairways are still playable, but uh, looking a lot better than it was. On your right, you've got the Sandwell Island Beach Resort. This is on the corner of Donex and Middle Gulf Drive. They are back open. Their uh, pool bar is open to the public. And we're turning left onto Donex. And what is along Donax, Laurie? On Donax, we have uh, the Driftwood Inn, which has four cottages, Palm View, and the Sandpiper Inn are also open here on Donax. Small resorts, but super cute and a close walk to the beach. Okay, and we're just coming up on the left here. We have Rosalita's, which is open. I went in there the other day, had an amazing lunch and possibly a margarita. Well done. And on the right, we have Ding Darling, which has been open a while now. Got some nice new additions. They've got a new outdoor bandstand area. It's more like an outdoor classroom area. Which it's called is... The Roost. They do yoga and outdoor concerts. And don't forget, everybody, a lot of people forget the actual wildlife drive is closed on Fridays. So don't show up on a Friday. But we're only covering things that are open. So come That's all the true. other days. <laughs> Talk about Saturday through to Thursday. Right. And they also have a gift shop in there with really cool things. Crow is open, which is the center for real or clinic for the rehabilitation of wildlife our sanibel school is back open it is k through eight in the sanibel school they are so happy to be back there and also the recreation center that is open to the public as well they have weight room and um, uh, gym facilities so if you're visiting and go uh, go check them out they i think they do daily and weekly passes just have a look on their website or give them a call. Also in there is where you buy your beach parking stickers. If you are going to be here for a while, we highly recommend getting a, a visitor sticker. It kind of, I believe it would probably make up for itself instead of paying the $5 an hour to park. Okay, American Legion is open and it is open to the public. You do not have to be a veteran, so. Go check out the American Legion. Coming up on your left, we have Bowman's Beach Park, completely open and uh, beautiful beach as it always has been. And we're going to pick you back up just as we come up to Captiva.
Okay, we're picking up back here at Santiva, the end of Sanibel, start of Captiva. We're still officially on Sanibel. As we come around the bend here, we're gonna be going to Blind Pass Beach, which is still open. Parking lots are open. Same system, $5 an hour. Uh, you text a code and they send you a link to pay. Just coming over, coming up to Blind Pass Bridge, and then we'll be going to Turner Beach on your left. Parking lot is full. People making good use of the beaches. People love to fish off this bridge. You see people all the time. Oh, yep, here they are. They're on the right-hand side. A bunch of people up there catching fish. Tide's on its way in. So hence, everybody's on the right-hand side of the bridge. If it's on its way out, they're on the other side. And here is Turner Beach on the left. They do have facilities, the restrooms are back open, I believe, shower, um, bike racks, etc. So mainly residential as we go down here. Anything to report until we get to? Just great to see the vegetation coming back right after the storm. Basically, the leaves were stripped off the trees and you got to have actually a look at all the houses that you didn't actually get to see before. So it was kind of neat to see all these beautiful homes out here but uh, the vegetation, the greenery is coming back. Okay, I'm gonna pick up where we get to Tween Waters and uh, we'll pick up from there. Okay, and here we have the Tween Waters Inn on the right-hand side Actually, here. Actually, Tween Waters Island Resort and Spa. Okay, Tween Waters <laughs> Island Resort and Spa on the right-hand side. And they have been open all the way through. And they have the old Captiva House restaurant, the Crow's Nest Steakhouse. And, and a great new restaurant. Yep, yeah, the, the Crow's Nest and the Shipyard are both new. Open to the public. And there's also marina, you can do boat rentals. There. Yeah, don't forget to Captiva Water Sports back there. Captiva Island Yacht Club is open, it is a members only yacht club. Uh, Captiva Water Sports, Rob back there does uh, jet ski rentals and all sorts of things back there. And I think they just started a tiki bar, floating tiki bar too. Have so, they? Yeah, that looks like fun. Excellent. Now, as we come up to this bend here, you're gonna have Jensen's on the Gulf. And as we go around the bend, you're gonna have straight in front of you is gonna be the green flash, which is now open. That's fully open now. So here we are at Jensen's on the Gulf. I believe there's, it's a small little resort, six or eight accommodations. There's the main building in the front and there's a couple little cottages behind. Really super cute. And dead ahead we have the Green Flash, Bayside Bar and Grill. Fully open, it used to, it did have a, a pop-up at the bottom but now they've got everything open so And here we're coming up to Andy Rossi Lane. Bailey's General Store is open. 
Actually, it's called the Island Store. The Island Store Pub. Oh, by the Baileys. McCarthy's Marina is open for boat rentals. Yeah, Captiva Cruises lives out of McCarthy's Marina. Lots of fishing guides live out of there. Um, we also have John R. Wood Properties, um, a real estate company here in this little cottage on the left. Did I say on the left? I meant the right. <laughs> Okay. The, the Emporium is open, which was part of the bubble room, and so is the the ice cream, but the actual bubble room is not open. That's called Boops. And then you have the Mexican restaurant, which is open, and so is Barracudas and Beach Stuff. South Seas is partially open and the farmer's market is back on a Tuesday. And don't forget, Starbucks is open as well. South Seas encompasses the last tip of Captiva. It's, um, I don't even know how many rooms are in there. Do you know, Nick? Uh, no. <laughs> Was it four miles long? It's pretty big. Yeah. Not four miles, probably two. Two miles? Yeah. It's a gated um, resort. Allison Hagerock Park. This is not part of the parking system like you do on Sanibel. It is separate. Um, I believe there's an app you download and do it through the app. It's called Park Mobile. Um, once again, just check out the signs when you get here. There are no facilities except for the port o -Loos. And they do have the handicap uh, mat, to, it goes like the mobile mat, I think, to actually get down to the beach. Which and is make nice. sure you enjoy every moment that you're here because it is rather costly. Yeah. What? $25 for two hours, I think, and $40 for the day. But definitely worth it. Look, you are near Lillary Park and you're right on the beach, and the sunsets from there are spectacular. The Bank of the Islands is open, and sorry, the post office we just passed on the right. Okay, next we're going to hand down, uh, head down Andy Rossi Lane. Once again, we're passing the Emporium, a real cool gift shop, and Boops by the Bubble Room. The actual Bubble Room is not open yet, but Boops sells all the amazing cakes. Red Velvet, Orange Crunch, White Christmas. So if you need a Bubble Room cake fix, that's the place to go. Well, Otters is open. Sunshine. Sunshine Cafe is open. 
So RC Outers and the Sunshine Cafe are open. The Gold Parrot is open, which is a uh, clothing gift store. Captiva Island Pizza. Santa Ball, or the carts. Uh, I'm trying to remember the golf carts that are open there, golf cart rentals. Do you remember, Nick? Not offhand. And then we have American Realty for vacation rentals, and Kingfisher Vacation Rentals is open. Jungle Drums, the gallery on the right is open. YOLO Water Sports, they rent um, jet skis and paddle boards, you name it. And then the infamous Mucky Duck. And the parking lot is packed. Definitely come early if you want to get a spot. And it is only open to patrons of the restaurant. The park, uh, the parking lot, yeah. They do not take reservations. And the popular beach, everybody um, loves to sit on this spot as well. Sunset are amazing. Mucky Duck has, does have a beach webcam. So you're up in the north getting some snow. Jump on the beach webcam at sunset and watch the sun go down on Captiva. I remember it's called Salty Wheels, golf cart rentals, and also Sanibel carts are in there as well. All right, so here we are turning back right onto Captiva Drive. Once again, um, McCarthy's Marina is straight ahead where Captiva Island Cruises is and also our good friend, Captain Brian on the water. He does eco tours, shelling tours. Um, make sure you contact Captain Brian for an awesome tour of the area. Okay, we are passing Wiles Drive on the right. If you get on there, uh, the Captiva Civic Center is open. Um, check out their website. They do a lot of interesting art exhibits and speakers, and also the Chapel by the Sea is back open. A few things I forgot to mention that were open that I missed. We have Weddings by the Sea, which is Pat Slater. Want to tell everybody about Pat? Yeah, Nick. Pat's a long time island resident, has done thousands of weddings um, on the island. She's an officiant, and then she will get everybody together for you. Find Specializes a place. in small weddings and will bring flowers and a photographer and videographer. Yeah. Really? Whatever you want, she can yep. take care of it for you. Yep. What else do I forget? The Burns family team, another awesome family of realtors. Uh, there's a sitter called Serenity Sitters of Sanibel. They do pet sitting and dog walking.
And also I missed Blind Date Charters, which is another fishing guide. We have Captain Bubby's Island Tours, Captain Ozzy Fisher, Captain Sean Kelly Charters, Offshore Sailing School, the Moak and Cabana Club, Flipside Eco Charters, Endless Summer Charters. And if we've forgotten you or left you off the list, please mention yourselves in the comments below and we'll be happy to share you at a later date. Keep us posted. And thanks very much for joining us on this update. Uh, we'll be sure to bring you on at a little later date and uh, you can see there's a big improvement on the islands lots of businesses coming back uh, big progress since the last time we were here so uh, thanks very much for joining us i'm nick i'm laurie i'm max have a good one guys thank you